In the tropics of Central and South America, there are over 300 hummingbird species. Next to flycatchers, they are the second largest family of birds in the world. Of all these hummingbirds, only a little more than a dozen species come to North America for the summer, with the majority of them ending up on the western portion and only one species east of the Great Plains, the ruby-throated. The most widespread among all hummingbirds, this species has the largest breeding range of any North American hummer and is considered the only breeding hummingbird in the eastern half. They are regularly found in the gardens of Canada and the eastern and central United States. The name ruby-throated comes from the brilliant throat patch or gorget of males. A splendid ruby red with dazzling iridescence when seen in bright light. Females lack this beautiful feature, however it is possible to see a tiny bit of red feathers on the throat of some. In certain lighting or angles, this red can appear a little orange or black. This eye-catching throat patch is used to attract females and has earned it some nicknames from birders, such as Ruby Throated or Ruby to name a couple. As early as late February, most Ruby Throated hummingbirds cross the Gulf of Mexico, flying north. A trip that can be as long as 500 miles, flying non-stop over open water with it taking up to 22 hours to cross. Quite remarkable for such a small bird, but some ruby throats aren't strong enough to make it in one trip, with exhausted individuals taking temporary refuge on offshore oil rigs and boats. Once rested, they dust themselves off and bravely continue making the rest of the trip. The other portion of the population will go around the gulf, concentrating along the Texas coast and stopping along the way to feed. Male ruby-throated hummingbirds usually leave before the females, arriving on their territories as soon as possible, often before there are enough nectar flowers to sustain their high sugar demands, especially in more northern locations. This is where an unexpected partnership is formed with yellow-bellied sapsuckers, woodpeckers that drill holes in trees with their strong bills to release the sugar-rich sap. Ruby throats buzz along with sapsuckers in the hopes of getting some of this much-needed nourishment. In return, the little hummingbird will chase away any other birds and animals interested in the sapsucker's bounty. For this, the woodpecker appears to tolerate the ruby throats, allowing them to have some of the sap. Pretty sweet trade-off. An interesting thing about ruby throats, or any hummingbird, is that they have very good color vision, and can even see in the ultraviolet spectrum. Some colors they are quite drawn to, such as red and orange. The reason is that the flowers with the highest sugar content are typically those colors. Another thing is that plants of this color stand out very well, making it easy to locate them even when in shady places. This means that you can get a close-up view of these marvels just by planting bright flowers, such as trumpet creeper, honeysuckle, or red morning glory, to name a few. A great thing about the ruby-throated hummingbird is that they are often spotted moving around from different flowering gardens and they like suburban areas, towns, orchards, city parks, and yards, readily visiting them. In backyards, they are actually known to be quite bold, feeding at hanging plants and feeders on the porch and even next to a window. As to be expected for such a small bird with high energy demands and one that travels remarkably far during migration, many ruby throats only live one year. However, if they can make it past their first year, it is possible for them to live longer. The average lifespan is around three to five years, and incredibly, one female lived nine years and one month, the oldest recorded ruby-throated hummingbird. She was recaptured and re-released during banding operations in West Virginia. I wonder how much older she went on to be. If you live in their range and you want to attract them to your garden, it shouldn't be too hard. Hanging nectar feeders filled with fresh sugar water are highly sought after in early spring, since there aren't many flowers yet. It's really easy to make sugar water. It's just one part sugar to four parts water. It is suggested to change it at least once a week so that it doesn't spoil. And don't forget to clean the feeder. The ruby-throated hummingbird is quite the remarkable little bird with the determination and know-how needed to survive, which has helped it to be as successful and widespread as they are. What's your thoughts and experiences that you had with this charming little hummingbird? Comment below. I hope that you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new about our little hummingbird friend. Thank you for watching. Happy spring birding!